that's Butterworthy. Hey guys, welcome back to Butterworthy. I am your host, Jamie Butterworth, as always, and today we're discussing this game right here. Um, I wasn't really, I was kind of thinking about making a video on it, but wasn't really planning to until I started talking to people today about it and got some strong feelings about this game. Both good and really negative, actually. Um, first of all, let's get to the good. Now, I'm going to do this in two parts. Uh, first part is I'm just going to kind of go through the game mechanics. I'm going to go through the main story. Um, nothing major. Um, the second part is I'm going to actually go major spoilers to kind of discuss the end of the game. Um, but first and foremost, let's, uh, I'll let you know when that happens so you can just shut the video off and, you know, peace out until the next one. Um, but first and foremost, Bravely Default, of course, um, the main character of this game is, uh, named Tiz, and, um, it starts off with his entire village being swallowed up by a giant chasm and him losing his little brother and so on and so forth. At the same time, another girl named Agnes, who is the Wind Vestal, um, her whole, like, crystal orthodoxy thing just, like, crumbles around her. So, her and her little fairy, who is named Aerie, um, are out on a mission to actually restore all the crystals, all four crystals, uh, back to, um, back to working properly. So, you know, because when the crystals went down, so did, you know, there was no more wind in one uh, particular place called, uh, it was Anchon, I believe, uh, where they rely on the wind to actually run the entire city. Um, the waters were poisoned, there were, like, big magma flows in the fireplace and then there was the other one which I can't remember what it did but you know you get the point um so you uh Tiz and Anya's meet up and Tiz swears his loyalty to her to help her bring the crystals back and fight darkness and you know bring his village back to um back to operating again um here's where everything starts uh going with the story because they meet up with uh, this one character named Ring a Bell who uh, has a journal with lots of really prophetic writings in it, and he doesn't have any memory, so he doesn't know who he is, where it's from, so on and so forth. The usual trope of amnesia in an RPG. That's kind of how it goes. And they meet up with Via, who is um, the daughter of the Grand Marshal who's trying to actually like destroy the crystals and wipe out the orthodoxy. And, you know, it seems pretty simple, good and bad at the beginning, so on and so forth. Um, well, you go through the game, and you kind of... Um, go to the different temples to reignite the crystals and you, when you're reigniting the crystal you jam on the X button a bunch of times and then boom you're you're good there uh repeat ad nauseum um the actual gameplay itself is you know standard role-playing game fare um but there is a bit of a twist you know it's turn-based you select moves for this person select moves for that person so on and so forth so on and so forth beat the enemies um but they have the brave and the default system default is sort of like blocking um but you store one brave point and brave points you can spend to take extra turns during that one turn. Now, the characters can also go into the negative for brave, because you can do a maximum of four attacks in one turn, uh, each additional attack costing one brave point. So you can store up three brave points at a time, spend them all, and then you'll be good to go again next turn. Or when the battle starts, you can spend all four at the same time, and uh, or spend all three at the same time to go to negative three. Um, and your character will just kind of sit idle for a few turns if you don't wipe the enemies out. Um, the, it, the battle system itself it, is actually really engaging when you're getting into playing with uh, Brave and Default, and it opens up a lot of different uh, possibilities when it comes to longer fights, uh, boss fights and such. And uh, some of the classes, because this is a very detailed class system, um, revolve around spending Brave points. So you would you know generate Brave points to spend on other things, or you just spend the Brave points right off and go negative. Uh, classes like the Valkyrie, you're very heavily depending on it. Uh, another class is the Templar. It's very dependent on it. Also, the uh, what is that class? Uh, there's another kind of healing class that, that depends on a bit. And every class has one or two abilities that, that revolve around brave points. Um, but other than, than the brave and default system, the combat is pretty much what you expect from your average JRPG. Now, um, this game, I well, the, cl the class system is very reminiscent of the old school Final Fantasy tactics. Um, but the way you actually unlock the classes themselves is by doing these uh, optional quests. Uh, you get a few if you just do them, all the main story, but all the optional quests, which will show up as blue, uh, blue little chat boxes uh, on your main map, those are the ones you're going to want to do to unlock more classes. Things like Thief, uh, Ninja, uh, Salve Maker, uh, Blade Master, things like that all come from doing the, blade quest, uh, the blue quest. So I really recommend that you do every single one of those. 
at least for the first few chapters, because it comes to a point once you've unlocked the majority of the classes where I would honestly suggest skipping them altogether. Um, overall, I mean, for the first 50, 55 hours of this, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a fantastic game, great story, great characters, well written. Each character had distinct personality personalities, and it just it really drew me into it. The battle system was engaging. Um, and you, you had to grind a bit every so often, but I'll tell you, there's a really easy way um, to make the grinding go faster and make it easier on yourself. At the beginning of every single battle, when you're just grinding, just make all your characters brave, all the way to negative three, and then just hit them with everything you've got to just wipe the enemies out, because you get a couple bonuses for this. Um, whenever you beat a battle in one turn, you get the um, the um, one turn victor champion, uh, one turn victor bonus, which is like. Um, I think a 10% experience boost, something like that. Um, once you get one turn victor five times in a row, you get one turn, um, whatever the next one is. It's, it kind of goes in order here. But once you move to the next one turn bonus, you get 20% additional experience. And then once you do that 10 times in a row, then you get one turn hero, which gives you 30% plus uh, experience per battle. So if you're just breathing with all your guys every single battle and just wiping them out that way you're going to get a lot more experience a lot faster um and there's also bonuses like um if you don't get hit at, any, at, at all during the battle you're going to get more jp if you uh manage to kill all the enemies with a single spell you get more money that sort of thing um so that's the way to grind you're going to grind you might as well do it right brave with all your eyes as max as you can and just wipe them out um Let's get to the negatives, because I really love this game up until the last 15 hours. And I probably could have ended it a bit sooner, but we're going to get to that in a second. Um, towards the end of this game, it becomes such a ridiculous slog, it's not even funny. Like, I felt like I was wasting so much time. Um, when you get towards the end of the chap uh, towards the end of the game, the last few chapters, the vast majority of the blue quests you get, you don't get any anything out of them. Um, you know, every single one of them ends in some sort of a boss fight. Um, you don't get any money for them, you might not get any experience for them, all you get is, is uh, job points, that's it. Um, you, it, it opens up a little bit of the side story, but you don't really need much of that anyway. And every time you start, you, you know, I went through and, I, and um, when all the blue quests showed back up for me again, and I get some more details in the spoilerish part, um, but I had... You know, 20 blue quests show up at once when I started a new chapter. It's like, well, let's go take care of all of this. And that took me like, you know, five, six hours. Wiped them all out. Went on with the quest. Started the next chapter. They were all back again. Every single one of those blue quests was back. And there were slightly different story things. But the characters still reacted mostly the same way to the same uh, story points. Unless there were key differences. And not every, not every battle had key differences. So... That was kind of frustrating because I really enjoyed the blue quests all throughout the game because I was getting different stories and I was seeing different characters and getting different jobs. And that just became pointless to do towards the end. So doing every single blue quest, every chapter towards the end of the game was, there was no point to it. I, I wouldn't recommend doing it at all. And you end up repeating the same actions every single chapter towards the end of the game. And it got to a point for me where even the characters themselves were getting exhausted. They were saying, well, let's just go do this and get it over with and we'll see what happens and so on and so forth. It, it was ridiculous. And I understand the story reasons behind it, but it, it was such a slog. It was ridiculous. One of the worst slogs I've ever had to deal with any game. And keep in mind, I put 68 hours total into this. And th there was no excuse for that. Now, the other really negative part of this was the microtransactions. Now, I know they came out ahead of time and they said, well, you know, you don't really have to buy these things if you don't want to, and you can just leave your uh, 3DS system in sleep for eight hours, you know, generate one of these sleep points. Now, the sleep points, of course, um, if you're in the middle of battle, you can hit start, and basically it freezes the game uh, for everything but the single character that you're currently selecting. And then you can do an extra action with that character, and that expends that sleep point, and that doesn't take away from your brave or anything else like that. So, even if you used all your brave and your character is sitting still, you can use your sleep point, and then they'll be able to, to uh, engage. They'll be able to do an extra action. Um, now, you can only have three sleep points at a time. I didn't, realize, I didn't find this out until today. Somebody else told me that. So, that's if you have your your 3ds in sleep mode for a total of 24 hours, um, then you'll generate three sleep points, and you can technically go into negative one. Uh, sleep points as well. 
Now, at first, I didn't think it was going to be that bad of a thing. Um, and they led us to believe that it wasn't going to be a thing either, because they said, oh, you know, it's totally optional, you don't have to do it if you want to, and, you know, they're technically right. But there was one caveat that really pissed me off at the end of the game. And that's, of course, the, the damage in this game is capped at 9,999. That, that's fine. You know, damage caps in role-playing games is, is no big thing. Until I found out that using one of these sleep points, which, you know, bear in mind, you either have to put your uh, 3DS in sleep mode for 8 hours, or you can pay... I, I'm not even sure what the price is, but you have to go online to the eShop to buy an SP drink to give you an SP point. But when you spend an SP point, it wipes out the damage cap. Microtransactions in games should not be like that, especially not for a game on a Nintendo system. That, that's just ridiculous. I would expect that out of Microsoft. I expect it uh, less so out of Sony. But a game on a Nintendo system should not have a microtransaction system that's effectively pay to win. You don't need it, technically, but by spending money to get more SP points, you remove the damage cap, which shouldn't be there in the first place if that was the case. It grates on me to no end that I was enjoying this game so much, and then I hit the end, and I deal with this ridiculous, seemingly unending slog, and then I find out that the damage cap can be removed by SP points, and I just got pissed off. Because there was no excuse for that. Because this game was honestly one of the best Final Fantasy games in the last 10-15 years, even though it's not a Final Fantasy game. It has the same feel, um, same kind of storyline, same sort of characters by the same company, but it's it's not. And it, the microtransactions combined with the, you know, piss poor slog at the end was ridiculous. And technically, I ended it a little sooner because there's multiple endings and I was so sick. <laughs> of playing the game that I was willing to try anything else to find another ending, and I did. But I didn't even get the real ending, technically. So we're going to get into that. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you've watched at this point, thanks for watching. Come back again. You know, like, comment, subscribe, the whole mess. But now we're going to get on to the spoilers. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, close the video out. And I'll give you five seconds. All right, we're good. Alright, so, during the story, when the slog starts to happen, um, you know, I'm playing through the game, I'm activating each of the crystals, I hit the fourth crystal, activate it, head of the light. Okay, go into the light, bam, it's like it starts over again. All four crystals are back to where they were at before, and you have to go back through and activate them again. I was fine with that, because it's like, well, you know, something happened. What happened? You know, what's going on? And questions, questions everywhere, and you know, why does that guy look like a ring a bell? And, so on and so forth. So I'll go through it again. And that's when I did all of the optional boot quests. I cleared them all up. And then I went back through and did the main quests. And you know, activate each of the crystals, then move on to the light again. Bam, starts over again. All the crystals are back to where they were. So you go through it again. And you go back into the light. And then starts over again. You would do this a total of 20 times at least activate 20 freaking crystals fight the same four bosses five times over you know each time getting progressively more difficult and the problem is is uh after this after the second or third time of doing this the general enemies you would fight just don't get stronger they stay at the same level so you're not getting that much experience you're not getting that many job points anymore you're still getting a decent amount of cash but that's it and then when you would go and fight these optional boss, uh, these optional uh, blue quests, you would only get job points. That's it. No experience, no money. And it was just a ridiculous slog through the end of this game. And I got so sick of doing the same thing over and over and over again. It was for hours on end, it felt like. You know, and um, when the sage tells you or kind of hints that you can... Uh, that the crystal should probably be destroyed, and then, you know, ring a bell, ask a question, and you find out the crystals could technically be destroyed if you just, you know, keep jamming the X button too much. Uh, even though I was never prompted to it, I was like, screw this, and I kept jamming the button. And then, bam, blew up crystal, and activated the, the ending of the game uh, to where I could actually go through and fight the end boss, so on and so forth. And I was done, and I just feel like I'm done completely. But I couldn't find out the real ending is after you you go through and you have to beat it uh, at least one more time 
I know I'd have to go through the crystals one more time, maybe two more times, I'm not sure. Because, you know, there's the, the countdown timer on Aries Wings. Starts out at four, goes down to three the next time, down to two, down to one, so on and so forth. So, once her timer is all the way down, that's apparently when you engage the real ending. And to be honest, I think I'm done at this point. Like, I can't go through any more time in this game to try and get to that real ending. As much as I enjoyed it, as much as I love you know, rebuilding uh, Tiz's hometown and and playing through the story with the characters, getting to know them, doing all the classes, enjoying the battles. I mean, between the terrible ending, though the terrible way to get to the ending, should I say, um, and the microtransactions that just pissed me off, it's just, I'm done. I'm done. I think I'm going to trade the game in because of being a South Park Sticker Truth is calling my name right now. So I'm going to get that one here soon. But I mean, Bravely Default really just pissed me off toward the end. It was such a disappointment. It was another one of those games that was kind of like The Last of Us, where I was really enjoying the game, getting into it, until the ending. And the ending fucked everything up. So, that's Bravely Default for you. Really good for a while. It was honestly going to be one of my favorite games in the past few years, and they just screwed it up. But what do you expect when you see that name right there on the box? Square Enix? It's like they don't know how to make good games anymore. They used to be the company of yesteryear, and now they just they can't make a decent game without screwing it up. So, highly disappointed. Um, overall, I think I would probably give the game an 8.5. Maybe a 9, but 8.5 solid. Just the, the ending and the microtransactions. If it was just how they portrayed it in the, in the beginning, where you could pay extra to do extra moves, that, that's fine, I don't care. But when I found out that those stupid SP points will actually remove the damage cap, I was done. Because I kind of felt, I kind of felt a little lied to. I'm not gonna lie. So it pissed me off. But it's a good game. I'd recommend it. But I'm not gonna recommend it that highly. So maybe the sequel's better, and I'll get it if they get the microtransactions. But if they're back, then I'm not gonna buy it. But well, thanks for watching all the way through, guys. End of spoilers. Of course, I'll see you next time. Peace.